I have a question for you. Do you really feel that your voice is important to how society develops? That your vote really makes a difference in politics? Maybe not. I certainly don't. In fact, I think our time is better spent on technological innovation than political agitation. And I'm here today to tell you about three movements within technology that you can be part of that can radically change the world in the next five years. More so than any president of any country can. But first, Let's see how this has happened before. For more than a hundred years, scientists tried to stop overpopulation by getting politicians to make new laws. Then, in the 1960s, the population growth rate turned around. Did some politician finally forbid us to make more babies? No. But the pill became widely available in the Western world. Had these scientists spent less time lobbying government and more time developing the pill, they could have stopped worrying much earlier. To the, to the left here are the people we usually think of as being very important. But democracy produces the kind of leaders that the majority wants. So even the person on top of society, on top of politics, does not dare implement a policy that most people do not support. After all, this is what democracy is all about. To the right, we have individuals who truly made a global impact using technology. For instance, Steve Jobs made smartphones popular, and many credit smartphones for playing an important role in the Arabian Spring. These guys needed no majority consent to do crazy, world-changing stuff. And technological progress is accelerating. In the Middle Ages, a father could expect his son to live under the exact same circumstances as himself. While today, just since you were born, we have started using the web, email, smartphones, GPS, new cancer treatments, and artificial organs. The reason this is happening is because one invention makes the next one easier. For instance, inventing email without computers would have been very difficult. So as these changes come faster and faster, we get more and more opportunities to apply them to social issues, to solve these issues with innovation instead of agitation. So now, I'll tell you about three new technologies with huge political implications. And for the first one, I'm going to ask you, when was the last time we saw a major innovation in political systems? I think it was with the invention of modern democracy, with the founding of the United States. But this is 300 years ago. Imagine if you drove a car from 
300 years ago, then you would be driving a horse. Innovation in any field requires experimentation. So if we want to find better political systems, we need space to experiment in. All land is taken by existing countries, but 70% of the surface of the earth is water. Seasteading is the technology that will allow us to move civilization onto the ocean. People are already living weeks on end on cruise ships. With this technology, we can build a hundred new countries at sea. And you guys in this room probably already have a hundred ideas for how to do so. Maybe someone wants to try a corporate model where shareholders in the country try to maximize profits. Another wants to try a direct democracy with all decisions taken in online polls. The key thing here is those countries that do best will attract more citizens and grow, serving as inspiration for the rest of the world. And this is not just a crazy idea. It's about to happen. So this ship is now being rented out to entrepreneurs who want to do business and live in its international waters. So imagine the progress, or imagine if all the resources going into lobbyism and political campaigns in the last 10 years had instead been spent on creating new countries at sea. We might have discovered democracy 2.0 or something even better. So that was my first technology for you. For the second, I want you to meet Pradeep from India, who makes a living by selling flutes in the street. He has no papers because registering a business would cost him half a year of income. But he sets up shop anyway, because that's what he has to do to feed his family. And in fact, this is how half of the entire population of the world makes a living without papers or legal permits. But without a bank account, Pradeep must meet all his customers face to face and trading cash, which is not enough to pay for schooling of his children. But what if cash could be sent over the internet? What if Pradeep could sell his flutes not just locally, but globally? Bitcoin is an open source cash currency for the internet. Bitcoin is decentralized, so unlike with bank accounts, there are no requirements for you to get a Bitcoin account. And sending and receiving Bitcoins worldwide has practically no fees whatsoever. Unlike with PayPal or Western Union, where especially small payments can get very expensive, making them unsuitable for developing markets. Bitcoin is its own currency, so it's being traded at exchanges where one Bitcoin right now costs about $11. And this map shows just a small share of Bitcoin users. In this network, Pradeep can now sell his flutes to a global market. All he needs to do is go to an internet cafe, open a Bitcoin account, and accept payments. This allows him to pay for schooling of his children. And if he had been required to register a business and open a bank account, he would never have come that far. So imagine the progress Bitcoin can bring to the developing world. 
as everyone gets the opportunity to sell their products globally, to sell their work globally. Brought to them by innovation instead of agitation. So that was my second technology. And I'll tell you about the third one now. This is Emma. Emma is born with a rare disease that means as she grows, she continuously needs new prosthetics to use her arms. Normally, this would be way too expensive for her family. But with 3D printing, printing physical objects instead of just letters on paper, Emma can have new sizes printed cheaply as she grows. And this is happening today. Recently, a guy made the news because he had printed part of a gun. As 3D printers become cheaper and cheaper, soon everyone will be able to download a file and print a gun in their own home. On the other hand, investments have also been made into 3D printing meat for human consumption printing with cells instead of with ink or plastic. This will do immensely more for animal liberation than animal rights groups ever have. So as you can see, 3D printing can be used for very different purposes. Maybe you're not a big fan of guns, but you like saving animal lives this shows how important it is that you engage in technology to pull it in the direction that you like. And moving production right into people's homes will be an incredible democratization of production that not even Karl Marx could have dreamed of. But interestingly, it'll be the result of everything he fought against. Companies and individuals acting in their own self-interest with strong profit motives. Not through revolutionary politics, but innovation instead of agitation. So these were my three favorite technologies but there are many others. And I'll leave you with this well-known saying. Politics is the art of the possible. On the other hand, technology can be defined as the tools and knowledge that makes the impossible become possible. And sometimes I just can't sleep because I can't wait to be living on a seastead and paying my rent in bitcoins and having a 3D printed steak for dinner. I don't know your dreams, but I urge you to consider if it will be politics or technology that will get you there and make your vision come true. Thanks. <laughs>